But they don't seem to have any, what? What is it? Maya? Story. Any story? Any story. Uh huh. So what you can do, sometimes characters are very talkative, and they're like, blah, 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 blah. And they talk to you, and they tell you everything you want to know about them. And sometimes, as Sam will tell you, your characters won't talk to you at all. And they're like, And you're like, oh, come on, I love you, I'm so glad you're here. I really want to put you in my play or my novel or my song or whatever. But then, and they're like, like that. So they won't talk to you. So you have to, uh, you have to be persistent and friendly and make conversation with them. So I would suggest all, all the characters that you have, make a list of them along you, make a list of them, and then just say, like, maybe one of them is like Jane. Okay, so Jane, and then just start talking to Jane. So Jane, what's up with you? Why are you in my play? Why do you want to be in my play? Why do you, or I'm assuming you're writing a play, I'm guessing, or my screenplay, or why do you want to be in my work, right? Talk to me, talk to me. What's your story? What's your thing? What's your favorite color? I don't know, do you have a bicycle? Like, oh, do you have kids? Oh, really? So do I. And you start chatting with her, like you would a stranger on a bus, you know, except this isn't going to be weird, right? Because if you talk to people like that, especially in New York, people think like, ew, you're crazy. Um, so you just start talking with them. Ask her, ask your characters why they showed up, why they have revealed themselves to you, OK? Why are you here? You know, ask them that. And they say, well, because, you know, I came with Mike. Great, who's Mike, right? Start talking to them as if they're real people, because they are. And uh, hopefully that will get them to reveal some things about their story. Because what you want to get, you want to get to the place where your characters are revealing their story to you, instead of you shoving story onto the characters. It sounds like you're just, you know, Milani, you're just, you're just waiting to see what they have to say to you. You can take a more practical approach and actually have conversations with them, as if you're interviewing them. Okay, and give that a try and see if it, see if it works. You do it for every single character in your play, even the ones you know a little bit about already. And I think the conflicts or what you're looking for will reveal itself or begin to reveal itself that way. Thanks for being here. Anybody else? Oh, hi, Star. Hi. So this is a problem that I have, and it actually just happened now. So sometimes I'll have a project that I need to work on. I have a deadline or something that I need to work on, and but I'll get a prompt just anywhere. Like someone will say something, and that'll I'll start that'll start with my prompt. And so you, when you said when all else fails, blame the brother, that was my prompt, and so I started writing based right. on that. But then, but I feel like what happens is I do that a lot. So, so I can be sitting down to work on something, and then something else will just pop in my head, or I remember something someone said earlier, and I'll go into that. And it's like right. I have to get it out because right. it's in my head at that point. So it's kind of like I guess a question of. Um, just 
having like certain compartments for your work. Like if you yeah. have something that you have a deadline that needs to be done, but then that other right. thing that's in your head is right. nagging and you got to get it out. Do you right. have any suggestions for? Yes, yes, yes. So you have? Do you write mostly on your? Did everyone hear Star's question? Pretty much. She's so she's got deadlines for work that has to get done, and then you sort of things come into your head. Whoa, that's cool, and you sort of will write on that for a minute, and then maybe you're not spending all of your writing time on the thing that has to get done. Yes. Because, right, okay. So are, you're not a Virgo, are you? No, I'm a Gemini. You're old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not going to go ahead and No wonder. No, well, no wonder. No wonder. So you can, you know, you can blame your star sign, right? Okay. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for you guys to, like, stay, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But my dad, oh, he's passed away. My dad was a Gemini. He got a lot of shit done. He was like, like that, okay? So it's possible. You just have to be, um, uh, the word gets a bad rap. You have to be disciplined. You have to be a little more organized. A little more organized than maybe. Are you, are you a Gemini too? You're, you're, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you, got, you, got, you guys got to be, you, you got to find some solid ground down there to stand on. So I would suggest a schedule and a notebook. Do you only solely write on your iPad there, or? Um, I write on like I, I write on computers, iPads, but I, I'm not as good as at the as notebooks. Yeah, I'm having the notebooks. So I'll, this is gonna sound weird, but I'll, I'll write, print something out, and put it in a notebook well, that's right. later. Yeah. But like I you don't, don't do and that. you don't have like the, in the most, you're not attracted to any of those cute little notebooks that they make. You know what? I could probably. Get myself back into that mindset. Little yeah. sure. I would trust. So I would say this thing. One, have a writing period every day. In case you have that, you have like uh, an hour a day where you write on your project that has a deadline. No, because I'm a Gemini and I just write. <laughs> <laughs> but See, I have to. My dad is a Gemini. He's got a lot of shit done, so it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. And what he would do is write in his dissertation because he got his PhD. And he would like go to his office and like sit at his desk for a certain amount of time. And he got a lot of stuff done that way. I was very helpful. And you have your little notebook. So when those fabulous ideas come, jot down the notebook and revisit them at another time. You see what I mean? So you have two writing sessions. You have your one session, your sort of main course, you know, and then you have your stop and smell the roses thing going on, you know, but then you go, okay, I think I'll write on, blame it on the brother, you know, that kind of thing, I'll write something about that. Um, but you're not going to be just always, you know, following every butterfly that walks, that flies into the room, you're going to be getting your work done too. So is that helpful to get a little notebook? Is that a most thing that you have that's smaller than that, you know, 10 minutes after? No, it's a, so, you know, the, the size I'm talking about, the little ones, the little, not, not, you know, tiny ones, but the little, they're about, you know, this, yeah. this big, right? And they're cute, and they can come in a cute little color. I mean, I like little cute things, you know. Yeah. And then you just, right? I will get one, and I'll, and I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, and, and just tr try that. And then, then you can actually be working on your project, and then an idea comes in, you can just, you have a, or whatever hand you like, you know? And I would suggest doing that instead of having two screens, so you're not flipping back and forth between two screens on your computer, click, 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 because that, uh, it's just light going like this, and you don't need that. You need to, okay? Yes. Right, try that, try that. And also be be really diligent. This, I have a deadline. I'm going to finish, I have a finish line. I'm going to get this work done, you know? Um, and you won't miss anything by right now. Okay, any questions? Anybody else? Yeah, Tim. Kind of like some of like, like where, because like for me, I'm, I find it difficult to find a space right. where I'm able to focus and create. Right. Because of like, you know, distractions and right. ADD and things like that. Right. So, do you have like a specific space that you like the are writing able, space? The writing space that you're able to like create without distractions, or do you welcome the distractions? Oh, well, that's a good. This is a very good question. So, do I have a writing space where I'm able to write without distraction? But this. Can one have a writing space where one writes without distractions? Um, I think if you have a writing space where you can write without distractions, great. Just to give you an idea, again, I, I said I was going to make it all about you, but we'll do it. So my writing space, I have a table. The, where I do most of my writing, it's a table. With, uh, it's a rectangular table, because I like edges. So 
So sometimes people have problems if they're writing at a round table and they like edges. You have to know what kind of what you like. Okay? It's in uh, a one room apartment, so it's in the living room. Also, it's a dining room table, which means what? Which means that the five year old is sitting at the end of the table <laughs> wanting to write the letter M, because that's his writing. And the husband is sitting inches away doing composition on a keyboard. So it's spoke. It's just leaning into your own work. Maybe getting some earplugs. That's very helpful. You guys, anybody ever try to work with earplugs? I'm not ear, not not necessarily the earbuds listening to music. That's that can also be distracting unless you can really get in the groove. But sometimes some really heavy duty earplugs are good. You put them in, and then you can sit in the Starbucks or wherever you know, be from being whatever, and sit there and focus. That's really helpful because then you start hearing the sound of your own breath, which is very good. Okay, and just. Also, a timer is really good. I'm really just talking, not your phone. You know this, right? Have you heard me say this? Not your phone, your phone is cracked. Get a timer, I just, I don't have my timers today. But get a timer, like a kitchen timer, that only is gonna count down or up the time. You set it for 20 minutes, and you just say, I'm just gonna focus for 20 minutes. That's good to start, you can just do that. Just, I'm just gonna focus for 20 minutes. And you train yourself to just focus, and then you can relax, and dive in again for 20 more minutes. Okay? So those kinds of things. But if we're waiting for the perfect conditions, not that you are, but a lot of us say, oh, if I only had, you know, a residency for three months and someone to bring me lunch in a picnic basket, then you have a gal, the ladies doing it. Um, or no distractions and no roommates or whatever, whatever, no children and no job. You write through the distraction. And that, that builds your muscle, you know, it builds your writing muscle. I know that. Yeah. But good question. Good question. Anybody else? It's good to see you here. Hi. Hi. Um, what about after? After, after. you finish. After. <laughs> after. After. After you finish. After you've written your beautiful piece. Yes. What do you do with it after? Yeah. Is it so? It depends what it is. It depends. Is it a play? Is it a screenplay? It's a screenplay. It's a screenplay. So you have, you have, I know, I know you, and you go to the, you went to the, did you, are you graduated? Because I see you, oh, so you're free. Hey, well, sorry. You're, you're liberated and out there in the beautiful world. So, uh, so Fedna, and I pronounce your name right? Okay. So Fedna's written a screenplay, and you also have some serious acting chops. So what about getting some of your colleagues to sit around and read it? Does that make sense? So you've done that already, uh -huh. after that. Mm -hmm. I would maybe contact people about maybe getting a, a reading, because the next step, if it's a screenplay, you want to maybe get a director, unless you're going to direct it also. You could. Uh, you know. yeah. But do you, do you know some directors from the, the uh, fabulous land of NYU? Yes. Okay, so there's some awesome directors over there, and maybe you could interest them. You know, if you've gotten the notes that you like and you feel like it's in good shape, then you can say, hey, fabulous director Joan of Art, or whatever her name is, maybe you could take a look at my screenplay, you know, I'm looking for a director for it. You know, so you start showing it to, uh, you widen your circle, basically. So that's what ha happens. So the first circle is very, very small. It's a circle of you writing it. After that, it gets wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. So you've already done the reading of it, which is great. And you've gotten the feedback and the notes and you've incorporated those notes, which is great. And then you take it to the next level, which is get a director, talk to some people who do, uh, like indie film maybe, or you know, a, a Hollywood style film, you know? Start talking to people and widen that circle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And also write the next thing while you're, because there's going to be now a little bit of a, a time lapse lag thing that starts to happen, and we, we wouldn't want to just sit around and wait, you know, for that director to have the time to read the script, you know, or, the, you know, so we want to just write the next thing and have that next thing chugging along so that you have a body of work instead of just one fabulous thing that, you know, may or may not get made right away, you know. Very good. 
good question. Congratulations on finishing something wonderful. Good job. How do we eliminate self-doubt and self-censorship when we're writing? Um, right. So, you probably, you probably don't eliminate it. It's like the perfect conditions, right? So it's always there, right? It's always there. It's just maybe you can turn down the volume a little bit of it. So that the voices in your head, I'm assuming they're from your self-doubt stuff, so it's from your own head, right? And what we can do is turn down the volume a little bit. And there's some ways we can turn down the volume. One, I think a really good way to do it is speed, not the not amphetamines. Yeah. Although, I, I mean, maybe that will work too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's, a, well, that's an experiment that somebody I'm sure has done. Uh, sorry, I, was, I just, there's a tangent I was going to go off and not know. Um, some, some, um, Unseemly politicians have been accused of being on fast moving. Because yeah. then they eliminate self doubt and yeah. self criticism. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> um, but uh, what we can do, so, so speed, writing quickly often helps. Okay? So, what you want to do, again, the same thing with the timer. You get your timer, and again, not your phone, because I heard, you know, Facebook, and I'm not on Facebook, uh, or, or it appears that I am, but I'm actually not. Those are people who are pretending. To be me, but uh, it's true. But um, I've heard that these social media are very uh, get you down a lot. Okay, so what you can do is turn off your phone, turn it face down, and turn it off, and then set your timer, which is not on your phone, and say I'm going to write for 20 minutes, and write as fast as possible. Speed is all, you can outdistance the voices of self doubt. Okay. Also, what I try to do is, uh, or what I do is I write from beginning to end. I write a whole draft all the way through. I don't spend time fixing the first three pages too much until I'm done with the draft. Okay? Okay? So, the third thing is that there's writing and then there's rewriting, and they're actually two different activities. So, if you want to, first you want to do your, re your writing, get to the end, and then you want to do your rewriting which is a different activity, okay? That's where you want to be self-critical and you want to have those voices in play because those are your editors, okay? So try to write all the way to the end. Try to have a daily practice session, right? So it's a lot, of, I'm giving like a lot of, or any of those like, yeah. So do you have a daily writing session? Do you write every day? Yeah. Okay, good, good, okay. There you go. So do you have a block of time, like a? Yeah, at least you'd be like me. Okay, okay. It, uh, almost every day or as, as often as you can? Yeah, usually about like 30 minutes. Okay, so good, very good. So what happens when you sit down to write? Is it, what is it? I don't know, it depends on the day. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sometimes I, I'll have something that comes to me, and sometimes I just don't do. Um, right. Or like, I'll know where I want to be, but I, I don't know how to get there. So. Right, and so what do you do when that happens? And that's the thing, you can always write down one word, just one word. Even if it's like, well, oh, that's two words, fuck it. It's two words. <laughs> but, you know, it could be one word. Like, yeah. oh. You know? Yeah. You can always write down at least one word. And that's very, very powerful to be able to do that. Because what you're doing is you're learning the, the spirit. I'm here, I'm working on it. And that's, you know. What did he say last, what was it, the quote we were uh, saying last week? Um, Chuck Close, the beautiful, fabulous visual artist, says, inspiration is for amateurs. So, you know, the pros just sit down and do work. Putting the time is very important. So, just, just keep working, keep working. Keep working, keep working, you know? But, good question.
So I'm finding myself now working on pieces simultaneously. Right. So I'm trying to not distract, have be distracted by one when I'm trying to work on the other. Right. And it's just become, I mean, it's it's interesting to try and sort out because I feel like I'm writing a scene and I'm like, okay, that'll work over here. And then I write another scene and I'm like, that'll work over here. And then right. I'm getting, I'm trying to not get to the point where I'm throwing everything up in the air and seeing my hands right. metaphorically. How do you, do you have any advice as to, the characters are now yapping away. Yeah, it's so good, but, but you think they're, they're two different pieces. It, it's starting to feel like it's two different pieces. Okay, okay. Well, so what's the problem? The characters are talking to you and you're writing. I feel like the character, I don't want it to turn into fan fiction and it's starting to feel like an edge Fan fiction? Like, there's a, yeah, yeah, I know the that Harry too. Potter. Sure, sure, sure. Part, you know, so yeah, that the crack has to be turned off. But there's, you know, it's just, there's interest, like, I'm trying to, I have a lot of children that I can visit. Right. 50 at least. And all the parents are like, write us something. We know you're writing. And I feel like that is sort of is starting to make me shut down a little bit. And oh. just feel a little bit like, I'm just going to listen to all the talk and tell me what your kids like. And, you know, maybe I'll be able to sort of recommend something while I figure out. You know, right. So this is a totally different thing. So, yeah. whoa, 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 wait, just, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, no, no, no. So, so you, so you, baby, you actually do babysit fifty people. Okay, so it's not just a. a no, 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 no. Okay, and their and their parents are asking for let's write us something. Yeah, basically. Yes, and I was just. I, I don't think I would like. Just say no. Much, no, you know, I'm not going to write you anything. Yeah, which is what I did, but then I thought, oh, there's all these. Yeah, it, it's, I'm just trying to set a boundary with people who are pulling me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, they're paying you for babysitting. Uh, a yeah, lot of people, they find you're a writer, find you're a writer and they want you to write something for them. Uh, my son, who's in kindergarten, as you know, he has a hey, hey, he has a, a wonderful, wonderful father. He goes to great school, public school, and he has a great bunch of teachers. And they found out I'm a writer, so they asked me, so maybe you could come in and talk to the kids about writing. And I said, um, yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Because the kids in my son's class, they don't know how to yet write their name. I mean, they're just learning how to write their name. So I'm going to wait on the conversation about writing with my son's class. I'm going to wait a long time. You know? You can say no. <laughs> you can say no. You know what? I'll, 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 I'll you know, show you my, I'll invite you to my playlist. playlist produced or I'll send you my novel when it's published and you know but it's it's, it's not it's I'm not writing like kids books or or, 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 or or I'll let you know yeah let you know so you know I'll let you know yeah that was a very strange experience yeah 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 but for your work for your work for your work to get back to you or yeah it's work. but what it, it was good because maybe was I was like okay my I'm definitely solidly writing a play for adults. Good. Children are not going to, it's not going to be appropriate. And I'm feeling this, you know, pressure. I was like, I, you know, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I was like, do, do I self censor? Because, you know, fear these people. No, no, the world, the world is always going to demand things of us. And we have to say just no. no. Or in a polite, kind, friendly, sweet way. You know, like I told my, I mean, I think I rolled my eyes when she asked me to come in and talk to the students about writing. But I smiled. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't think I'm going to Roll my eyes and smile. Yeah, maybe I'm going to do it next year. You know? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. You know. But it was better than the request I got last year, which was come and talk to the Pre uh, pre K kids about writer's block. Um, <laughs> I was like, really, 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 really. So yeah, the pre K kids were having writer's block, and the teacher wanted me to come and talk to them, and I just said, no. Yeah, the teachers have. 
Yo, right, right into yeah. Yeah, Carol says, the teacher's having writer's block. Yeah, I, yeah, so you just said no, thank you. This is super good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but you got, but it's for you. You got to, you got to do your, you got to keep going. All the way to the end. How are you doing? Mine's like nap time. No? somebody's novel and they're like really really good and then you know it's like oh shit you know I'm not Shakespeare what am I doing you know it's really right why am I even writing I'm not Gershwin or whoever you like I mean I don't know just the name came to me but you know right so how do you deal with that you know I think every single person who's ever made anything has that feeling maybe unless you're on amphetamine <laughs> I mean, no, even the 45th is like, I'm not the 44th shit! You know? I mean, he's like, you know, he's, he's really jealous and you gotta work through it. You gotta work through it, you know? My crowds weren't as big as his. What am I doing? You know, and you gotta sort of find a way to get through that. And we have to find a way to get through that. And the only way I think to get through it is to do your work. You know? Because like, like Bob Dylan said, like, I don't know when he said this, but the world doesn't need another song, right? He said, I mean, that's a paraphrase. So he probably said it much more eloquently. They're like, fuck it, man. You've written, I mean, yeah, you've written like all the songs. Who are you to say the world doesn't need another song? You know? So we have to give ourselves permission to do what we got to do. Right? Yeah. I think it's important to remember that when you're reading that, that's not his first draft. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, it's, it's not his first draft. It's his first draft. And if you ever see the first drafts of the books, it's quite different. Exactly. That's true. That's very true. It's not the first draft. It might not be the fifth draft. That's true, too. But even when it's done, if you still have that, you know, you have, we all have that similar feeling. And you think, I'm going to do my thing. You know, that's, it's, it's sort of like it's an act of will. Just you have to just will yourself to continue. Um, and again, like we're talking with Mandy, you don't, don't pay as much attention to the voices of doubt because that might be how your doubt is manifesting itself today, right? Tomorrow it might be, oh gee, my mom would hate this if I wrote this, right? The next day it might be, I mean, I'm just saying that, that that's not how your doubt manifests itself, but someone else, right? Even you've heard people, because you've been coming here for a while, people are like, oh darn, I don't have any time, I have a day job. So that's how their doubt is manifesting itself. Or I don't have enough, uh, what, I'm a kid, I can't do this, right? It's a, it's a block that you're putting in your way. Recognize it as that. It's a mental thing that you're doing to yourself. You know? Yeah, we're, we don't, we're not writing the Brothers Care Monson. I wasn't reading that, but I was reading James Baldwin. You're reading James Baldwin. Oh, see? Oh, I know, God. see? Oh, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. see? so much to say, and he says it with such eloquence, and it just fills my heart, and you know. But let it, let it buoy you, let it ferry you across. These writers, if they're worth anything, if an artist is worth anything, they're making their greatest effort in 
to serve as a, as a means to ferry the rest of us across. That's what we're doing. Any artist who is making their greatest effort in the, as a means to like make people feel like shit, oh good, I'm gonna make a really great play, <laughs> and so people will feel like shit, oh, they can't write what I wrote. I make plays, that's some bullshit, and that's horrible. Any great artist, truly great artist, James Baldwin, he's writing those beautiful words to ferry us across. That's why he's doing it. That's why he's doing it. That's why all the, the, the wonderful ones are doing it. That's what we're doing. That's why Chris Barbo does it. Right, Chris Barbo? Right? Facts. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, boom, maybe. Yeah. Right? We ferry, we're, we're sharing our love with each other to help us get to through the day. Through the year, through the month, through the whatever, through the shit, through the beautiful moment, to remember the beautiful moment, to remember it again. That's why we're doing it. So take that from their work instead of squish you like a bug because you're nothing and I'm a god. You know, you see what I'm saying? You're, you're choosing to turn it into an impediment instead of a means. Exactly, which is what it is. If you look at it in the right way.
Yeah, and then you can have the first play something, and the second play a companion piece, and that could be a quote unquote full evening, you know. Even though, you know, uh, great writers like Charles Churchill should write a, a full length play that's like 10 minutes. It's great. It's like, oh shit. You know, she's amazing doing that. So we're allowed, or Sam Shepard says, a play should only be as long as it needs to be. So, you know, but if you want to make um, a, a, a new with intermission, you can make a companion. Right? Yeah. You know?